In addition to the stretching of line elements and volume elements, we sometimes have the need to talk about the stretching and straining of area elements. So I'd like to go through the construction of that. Um, so the basic setup is quite similar to what we have before. We start with a body B, and it's deformed with the deformation map phi into a body BT. And what we're going to do is we're going to consider points uh, big X, and we'll look at a little area element near big X defined by two vectors A and B. So we'll consider the parallelogram bounded by A and B, and that'll define a small area. And the normal vector to that area we'll, we'll call NR. So the norm of NR is equal to 1. And after deformation, the point big X will map to the point little x, and we'll have the vectors A mapping to FA and FB, so the area bounded by the parallelogram AB moves to the area bounded by the parallel, parallelogram FA, FB. And the normal vector to the, this new area we'll call N. So the norm of little n is also equal to 1, just like the norm of NR is equal to 1. So that's the setup here, and we'd just like to calculate the ratio of these two areas to each other. Now, the the area that we start with, the reference area, whose magnitude is dAr, we can write that as dAr nR is equal to A cross B. So if I take the norm of the, both sides of this expression here, then I'm just going to find out that dAr is equal to A cross B. Uh, but this, this is kind of a helpful way to write it, as, as we'll see in a few minutes. Similarly, the, the deformed area, dA, the magnitude, if I write that as dA times n, that's equal to fA cross fB. Now, what makes writing the areas as these oriented areas with the normal vector useful is a formula known as Nansen's formula. And Nansen's formula relates the uh, oriented areas to each other, and it tells us that DAN is equal to J F inverse transpose NR DAR. So again, recall that J is just simply the determinant of F. Okay, so this is a, a handy geometric fact to know about. The proof of it is a little bit tricky. It's not too hard, but it's slightly tricky. And in fact, most often when 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 one sees the proof of this relationship, it's actually usually incorrect. So that, and there's a little bit of trickery to getting it correct. The result is usually correct, what they report, but the proof is incorrect. But uh, it's possible to prove it with, with a little bit of effort, but we, we don't need that right now. So let's go ahead and move forward and look at what the area stretches. So that's just simply going to be the ratio of dA to dAr. So it's not a derivative, it's just the ratio of these two numbers. And what we can do is we can take the norm of both sides of Nansen's formula, and that will give us the working relationship here. So taking the norm of both sides of Nansen's formula, we see that this ratio is the norm of J F inverse transpose applied to the normal vector NR. So if I expand that out a little bit, that's J square root of NR F inverse F inverse transpose NR. So again, using the definition of the transpose. And it, we can recognize the product of F inverse, F inverse transpose as C inverse, so the inverse of the right Cauchy green deformation tensor. So we kind of come to a final result here for the area stretch. It depends on the position, and it depends on the orientation of the area that you're looking at, and then it's equal to J nR C inverse of X nR. And I guess the J here also is a function of capital X. So it depends on the point you're looking at by way of J and C inverse, and then the orientation of the area that you're interested in by way of NR. Uh, and if we want area strain, it's just going to be lambda area minus 1. Now, just one quick bit of nomenclature before uh, stopping is that little notation here is that the cofactor of f is defined to be j f inverse transpose. So sometimes one sees Nansen's formula written in this way uh, utilizing the cofactor of f. So just want you to be aware of that notation.